Hello everyone, this is Lloyd from the Air Gun Lab. I've built a new piece of test equipment. It's a hydraulic tester for testing air tubes for air guns, and it's capable of going up to 30,000 PSI. That's not 3,000, that's 30,000 PSI, or about 2,068 bar. So that's uh, quite a bit of pressure. What I have, I have an input side here, low pressure cylinder that will uh, apply up to about 7,000 PSI. Then the output side, it's really a hydraulic multiplier. It multiplies the pressure by about 5.6. So if I put in about 5,500 PSI, I'm going to get out about 3,000 out the other end here. Out this end right here. Um, uh, I have it supplied by a hydraulic hand pump. The hand pump will go up to about 8,500, but that will overload the system. The output on this end here, this is actually an adapter for a Crossman Discovery tube. I've got a 7 8 diameter air tube here that is very similar to a Crossman tube, 0 0.065 wall. Uh, it's 18 inches long. I'm going to go ahead and fill it with the hydraulic fluid and then we'll do a pressure test on this and see where it actually fails. So we're going to, it's going to be a destructive test. The other end down here, I'm going to go ahead and put in a fill adapter, a check valve fill adapter. I've taken the filter disc out so that the air won't get trapped in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and hook everything up and purge all the air out of the system. That'll take me a few minutes. So uh, let me go ahead and take care of that. All right, we've got it all set up. I've got the tube attached over here. 18 inch long tube, 7 8 similar to a disco discovery tube. It's filled, uh, bled all the air. Obviously, you can see that the bleeding process is kind of messy, getting all the air out of it. It's important to get all the air out so that uh, when it does fail, it doesn't explode. Down at about zero PSI here on the output and on the input. This skinny rod back here is a telltale rod. It's attached to the piston that shows how far the piston is so I can tell how much high pressure volume I've got left to use. I'm going to go ahead and uh, set this up on a tripod and then proceed with the testing. Alright, I've got the camera set up. We're going to go ahead and proceed with the testing. First thing I'm going to do is prime this. Uh, it's going to take and run the like 5,000 or just a couple thousand PSI in through the manifold block in here and it'll drive the high pressure piston back in here and it'll prime this all to maybe about 5,000 psi is where I'll stop. Then I'll lock this up, close this valve, and then I will take and route the hydraulic fluid into the low pressure side which will take in, that'll increase the pressure up to whatever it takes to cause failure. I'm predicting about 11,000 for it to start failing at, 11,000 psi. If you look here at the dial, we're pointed at zero right now, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20, 25, 30,000 PSI. So I'm going to go ahead and start the process now. This is the bleed. I've got it shut. That's the fill on the high pressure side. I've got it open. Fill on the low pressure side is closed. The bleed on the low pressure is closed. So I'm going to go ahead and pump this up. I'm behind the little barricade with the pump.
got about 6,000 PSI on the high pressure side. I'm going to go ahead and shut the valve, the input, on the high pressure side. That was bleed. Okay, now I'm rerouting the hydraulic fluid to the low pressure side. You'll probably see this needle jump a little bit. There we go. And the telltale rod moved just a tiny bit. Filling the low pressure side, like I say, it's about a five and a half to one pressure multiplication. So I'll fill it from here, but this is the important one because this is the tube we're testing right here. One. So we're ready to go ahead and put some pressure on it. We'll see what happens. Almost at 11. And there it went. Blew the side out. All right, because I was behind a barricade, I couldn't see what pressure it blew at. So I'll have to replay the uh, video and see exactly where it failed. You can, you can see the failure on the side here. Open up here. Let me go ahead and get this back into the shop. We'll take a look at it. Well, we're back in the shop with the failed tube. You can see the split in it. By the way, this is welded steel tubing. Welded and then drawn over mandrel to give a smooth ID. The failure is along the weld, but I do want to point out that the expected failure pressure should have been about 13,900 PSI. And the actual failure was a little over 16,000 PSI. So much better than expected. I do want to point out another thing here. Uh, the end connections were threaded, which is the way they're supposed to be. But I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to bring this up close. Right in this area here. Put this to focus. There we go. See those little witness lines there? Those are actually the threads from inside the tube where this end of the tube was starting to pull off. Because where the threads are, the thread root inside there, that's the thinnest part of the tube. Now there's no pressure in here, but there is axial force on it trying to pull the end off. If you look where these threads line up, this weakening is just past the end of the threads. So this was headed to failure also, but still way, way above anything this thing will ever see in service. I mean, it was designed for 3,000 PSI, maybe 3,500 PSI, and here we're at four and five times that before we're seeing any sort of failure. So I have to say that I have full confidence and I say that I'm very pleased with the results. So that's it from Lloyd from the Airgun Lab for now.